This is Deepin 15.7. I've had this installed on an external hard drive for several days now, just to look at the new features and reacquaint myself with some of the old features. So I'm going to cover a little of both. When it first loads, you get this animated introduction. And of course, you can go down to various features like the desktop mode. There's an efficient mode, which is the way I have the panel set now. And the fashion mode, which is more like a dock. And that's the way it came. You can change the icon themes. The window effect consists of more advanced graphics, including transparencies. And of course, this is how you can support them. And about us. The new features that are generally discussed in Deepin 15.7 consist of a more streamlined code, a smaller ISO image, lower resource requirements, and an auto power saving mode, which is supposed to extend battery life. I'm going to discuss those in a bit, but the first thing I direct your attention to is the control center. That's this symbol. You'll notice that it opens to what you were using previously, and I was using sound. But I want to go down to system first and update settings. And down here is switch mirror. Now you notice I have US Linux kernel archives as my default mirror. That's not the way it comes. It comes with the official mirror as the default, and I selected US kernel archives. Now, what you do here is you click on test speed, then you have to wait a while. U.S. Linux Kernel Archives and U.S. Silicon Valley Web Hosting LLC are both fast where I am, which is in Chicago. The official mirror is medium. U.S. James Madison University and U.S. Georgia Institute of Technology are timeout. They've been time out for the last year or more, as far as I can tell. They don't seem to be active. Then you have several interfaces in China, where Deepin originates, and Australia, Austria, Brazil, etc. The ones that are working at all, either medium or slow, so I'm going to stick with U.S. kernel archives. But you want to set this first. If you try to use the package manager or anything else requiring the internet, it's not going to do much good if you don't have a fast mirror. Of course, the first thing I did was connect to the internet, and that worked fine. It's connected to my wireless network. However, I wanted to note one oddity about Deepin. And that is, instead of having the network manager combine wired and wireless connections, there's a separate network manager for wired connections. And this one shows that there is no wired connection. That's because I don't have my Ethernet cable plugged in. That's one thing I wanted to call your attention to. Another thing is the small version of the launcher. The launcher is here on the left, and this is the way it usually comes with all applications shown. It seems that they're in order of deepens preference, or perhaps 
popularity. It seems like a somewhat random order, but by clicking on this little symbol here in the upper left, you can make it a categorized menu. So you have internet, music, video, graphics, office, reading, system, and others. Now, if you click on the symbol on the upper right, these little arrows pointing to one another, you get the smaller menu. And this is a bit of an oddity. This keeps changing a little bit with every new release of Deepin. You have two panes, but one pane is not a category pane. The right pane is more like a places menu, computer, videos, music, pictures, documents, downloads, manual, etc. It also has the time and date, has settings, and it has shutdown. On the left, you have the applications list in the frequency of use. And I've been using the Deepin Terminal System Monitor Synaptic Package Manager, which I installed, Simple Screen Recorder, which I installed, the Deepin Manual I was just looking at, etc. I'm not going to go over these now. If you click on all categories down here, you get a categorized menu, but the trouble is you can only see the categories or the contents of each category one at a time. You can't see them both at once. So if I click on Internet, it gives me Google Chrome and Thunderbird Mail. Now, if I want to go back to the categories, I have to click on Back. That's a little bit inconvenient, and it resembles somewhat the old KDE Plasma menu, which I didn't particularly care for because you had to keep going back and forth, back and forth. But... That's the way it works, and it does work. And as with GNOME 3, the fastest way to search is simply to start typing anywhere in here. S-I-M, simple scan, simple screen recorder. So it's a little bit quirky, but it works. And of course, if you want the traditional array of icons, click on the symbol on the upper right, which shows the two arrows pointing away from each other, and you get the standard Deepin menu. It has a quick search. You can start typing anywhere, S-Y-N, and here's Synaptic Package Manager, for instance. I'm not going to run it right now. Now let me just go briefly through the panel down here. They call it a dock, whether it looks like a panel or it looks like a dock. And the difference is whether you're in fashion mode or efficient mode. Here's fashion mode. This is the way it came. And you can move these things around quite easily just by dragging them. But I prefer efficient mode. And the difference there is that I have a, more of a standard system tray arrangement over here on the right. So this is the launcher here on the left, show desktop, multitasking view, deepen file manager, deepen store, that's the package manager, deepen music, control center. I may have changed the order of these, I'm not sure. Deepen movie and Google Chrome, which is a default web browser, the one I much prefer to use these days. And here's Simple Screen Recorder, which I added to the panel. Then over here on the right, you have the little icon that shows that Simple Screen Recorder is operating. And when I right-click on that, I can pause the recording, cancel it, etc. I'm not going to do anything there. You have reference to my external drive from which I'm operating the system right now. You have sound. You can adjust the volume. You have power, and that takes you to power management in the control center. 
you have the wireless manager shut down and the wired network manager and then you have the time. Regarding the lower resource usage, I took these screenshots when all I had running was the desktop and of course screenshot itself. In this case I have it in window mode which has the transparency and all of those features and it's only using 413 megabytes, which is quite low. Surprisingly enough, when I disabled window mode, which removes some of those features, like the transparency, the resource use actually went up rather than down. It went up to 470 megabytes. I attribute that to the fact that any of these measurements of resource usage are snapshots in time they depend on all sorts of other things that may be going on with your computer rather than the things you're specifically looking at. So you have to take all of these with a certain grain of salt. However, it does seem to require far fewer resources than it did in the previous versions. Now here I'm running the system monitor and I have simple screen recorder going, of course. So it's now using 1.2 gigabytes of memory, which is considerably higher. And it's using around 70% of my CPU capacity, which is fairly high, even with a simple screen recorder running. So again, it depends a lot on what you have running. Now let me go to the control panel again. This is the way control panel first appears. You see the little navigation bar on the left doesn't show at all. You click on something, anything, the first one accounts, and you get the navigation bar. And from there on, you can go down from one thing to the next. Display, default applications. Now, of course, you could also scroll up and down, and in this case, I'm using edge scrolling with my touchpad. But it's really easier to use the navigation bar. So, accounts, display, default applications. This is probably one of the more interesting ones. Personalization. Click on theme, and there are two themes, Deep and Default and Deep and Dark. I have it on default now. If I click on Deep and Dark, then open the File Manager, nothing is different. So that's Deep and Dark for you. I guess it will become different at some point. Anyway, I'm going to leave it on Deep and Default. Under Icon Theme, I don't seem to have it on the default theme right now. If I change it to Deep and Default, the icons change a little bit, as you can see here. And there's Maria. See, they changed a bit more. Papyrus. They changed again. Some of these are becoming rather difficult to see. The control center seems to have almost disappeared. I have to scroll down here to see. That's the one I had. I was unaware of that. I'm going to change this back to deep and default. Now I can change the font if I want. I can enable or disable the window effect. It's enabled right now. Control center is semi-transparent if I disable it. Control center no longer has any transparency. But I'm going to re-enable it. Here 
Here's the network. There's a wired network card. The wired network itself is disconnected. There's a wireless network card. And the wireless network is connected. If I click on hotspot. That means I'm not acting as a hotspot. There's also space for DSL, VPNs, application proxies, system proxies, and network details. And Bluetooth is up here. I don't have any Bluetooth devices. I should probably just disable that. Looking for devices which don't exist. So I'm going to disable it. Sound, of course, I've been using sound. I'm not going to change it because I have it the way I want it. Shows my microphone input and output, etc. If you click on advanced down here, uh, you can set how you want your output and input to be handled, and I want them both handled by my Yeti stereo microphone. So if I click on clock, I can change the time zone, the system time, etc. If I click on power, this is an interesting one. I have the power saving mode turned off. But there's also an auto power saving mode. And I want to show you how that works. If I turn that on, nothing happens because I'm plugged in. But if I unplug the power, you notice power saving mode goes on automatically. I'm going to plug it back in again, and power saving mode goes off automatically. Now, I don't know exactly what power saving mode includes, because as usual, I have turned off all the power saving features. Monitor will suspend never. Computer will suspend never. I've turned off requiring the password to wake up the monitor. I've turned off requiring the password to wake up the computer. I've turned off suspend on lid close. So I don't actually know what's going to happen when auto power saving goes into effect. But presumably something will happen that will give me greater battery life. I haven't changed anything here on mouse and touchpad, and it has natural scrolling turned off, it has palm detect turned off, and it says down here, please disable the option if touchpad doesn't work after enabled. Well, it works, so I'm going to leave everything the way it is. It seems to be using regular edge scrolling by default, which is what I prefer. So now I go down here to keyboard and settings. I haven't changed anything here. Repeat rate, caps lock, prompt is on. Enable numeric keyboard is on. Now I'm going down here to update. And I went over that before showing you how to switch mirrors. You can also update your computer if you want, but if you go there, it starts automatically. Well, it was pretty fast. It detected one update. It detected a new system edition and one application update. So I'm going to click on download and install updates. Zero percent downloaded, click to continue. Now it says zero percent downloaded, click to pause. Now it's downloading rather rapidly.
So the download went quickly. Now it's updating. Uh, it wants to know if I want to restart now, and I don't want to restart now. So I'm just going to click on Cancel, and that's that. Now I have to go back to the Control Center, and I'm going to go down to System. And again, it's usual system information. Copyright by Wuhan Deepin Technology Company Limited in China. It's a 15.7 desktop, 64 bits. Shows my processor, memory, disk size, etc. The license. And then there's a boot menu down here. You can uh, change the theme and the startup delay on the boot menu and you can uh, change the order at which things are going to be displayed by dragging them. I'm not going to change anything here though. So that's the control panel. To get out of it just click on the desktop. Now let me just go through some of the things that haven't changed briefly. Here's the multitasking view, which I really like. I have uh, four desktops currently enabled. I think it came with three and I added one. And they each have a different background, although you can change the backgrounds independently. To go to the desktop you've chosen, you have to click on the field of the desktop again. There's that one. This is number four. So I'm going to go back to number one. And if I right click on the desktop, I can change the wallpapers set wallpaper. You could see there's quite a large variety. Also, if I right-click on the desktop, I, I can change the display settings. And that, of course, takes you to the control panel. I can change the corner settings. And right now, there are four corners enabled. The lower left shows all windows. The upper left shows launcher. The upper right shows close windows, and the lower right shows the control center. And of course, all of these can be changed. I don't want to use the lower left here because I've got the efficient mode of the panel that goes all the way across, and there's an interference there. So I'm going to click on none. But I want to show all windows when I click on the upper left. So. I'm going to change that. Now when I go to the upper left, <laughs> nothing happens. Now when I click on the upper left, it shows a simple screen recorder is running. Actually, I want to stop that preview. Now 
Now if I go to the multitasking view, it shows my simple screen recorder and the first workspace, even though it is minimized, but before it did not show it. I don't have anything else running. And I think the reason for that is there's a category here when I right click on this simple screen recorder of showing and hiding the window which I haven't encountered before. So apparently when I hide it, it really hides it. Let's take a look at the deep and store. When I first started the deep and store, I got a network error. The deep and store wanted to connect to the network faster than it actually did. And I kept getting this network error, but I haven't been getting it recently. And I think if you have a fast connection and a fast mirror, you won't have to worry about the network error. So this is home. You can go to rankings and see the most popular applications. We go to internet. It lists the available internet applications. If you go to chat, the music, video, And these again are not in alphabetical order. You'll find just about anything you want in this repository. Under graphics, here's GIMP. Let me just click on that to see what version it is. It's version 2.10, which is the latest version. And last release of Deepin 15.6, some of the software was rather old. It depends a lot on the release date in relation to the last snapshot that they took. And in some cases, the snapshot is rather old, but in this case, the snapshot is rather fresh. Games. You have Steam. Under Office, you have LibreOffice. Let me just see what version that is. Version 6.04-1. That's pretty close to the latest version. WPS Office is already installed, and so it just says open here. I don't want to open it now. Reading it. Under development, you have Microsoft Visual Studio Code, Android Studio, so you have quite a few development tools here. Atom Text Editor, under System you have VirtualBox, Disks, which I believe is GNOME Disks under a different name. I'm going to install that. It's downloading. You can see there's a little progress bar in the downloading window there. Now it's installing.
and disks is installed successfully. I'll take a look at that in a minute. Under others, it has Play on Linux, a crossover, which is another way of using Windows applications with Linux. And this is, again, a commercial application, whereas Play on Linux is not. So that's the Software Center. I'm going to just see if I have GNOME disks or whatever they call it, disks. And yes, that's GNOME disks. This is my internal drive. This is my optical drive. There's no media. This is my one terabyte external drive. Uh, this is all I have on it at the moment. So that's Deepin 15.7. It's a little faster, it's a little lighter, presumably will give you a longer battery life on your laptop, but I haven't been able to test that. And it still has the features that are familiar to Deepin users. So it has improved and nothing has been sacrificed. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.